So I have a patient with um, renal failure progressing beyond what's going on with his diabetes. So his doc did a couple of tests. One of them was looking for uh, light chain. And although there were some mi minimal ev elevations of kappa light chain, uh, overall he, the patient was fine. Now, what is light chain disease? What's it got to do with the kidneys? Um, and what is this? Well, uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. We'll actually talk about some of the other uh, bone marrow uh, diseases like uh, mul multiple myeloma uh, and amyloidosis. We did touch on uh, multiple myeloma in a previous, um, a previous video in this series. But before we get to all that, just a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, -E and this is the Prevention Channel. It's uh, helping people to um, prevent the diseases that are most likely to uh, kill or disable them. Um, <clears throat> I have not done a lot on, on these diseases because they're fairly rare, but uh, there's a lot of geeks on this channel. I do get fairly deep into the biology and um, some of these diseases are very interesting biologically. And if you're one of the patients that has these, it doesn't matter that it's uh, rare. And if you're a family member, and I actually have a, uh, a friend that's a, uh, the father of a, of a daughter that had amyloidosis, it is a very serious disease. Uh, first, a brief introduction, Ford, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, I um, am a physician, started out as an, as an ER doc, got very frustrated very quickly with the things that should have been prevented. So I've spent my, I went to Hopkins to get some training in prevention, uh, ran the program there in prevention, um, ended up um, working in prevention all my life. Most of it being the medical director, uh, teaching primary care docs how to, uh, to do prevention. Um, <clears throat> so this is the filter, the glomerulus. And this is obviously a photomicrograph. In a kidney. It's got way too many of these blue things, way too much of this stuff. It's a mess. And the reason for it is this patient has light chain disease. Light chains are portions of antibodies. Uh, what are the antibodies that we're talking about? Well, antibodies are made by B cells and plasma cells. Um, did I do that upside down? I sure did. <clears throat> so uh, these uh, B cells sit around with the antibody sticking off, waiting for a, an antigen to come along, like a flu vaccine or a flu itself or a, an infection. And that antigen antibody uh, interaction causes the B cell to form a bunch of B cells making the very same type of antibody. And um, that's how you develop an antibody response. That's why it takes three to five days for uh, for you to go through the, the infectious process. It takes time for this process to happen with the interaction with the beta cell, I mean the B cell, um, to form a plasma cell and to form those antibody uh, clone lines. Now, <clears throat> this is what a typical antibody looks like. We'll go into other antibody classes in just a minute. The, uh, the business end, the place where the, um, the antigen receptor site is right here between what's called the long chain and the light chain. There are two types of light chains, uh, kappa light chain and uh, gamma light chain, I think. And we'll talk about those a little bit later too. Not a whole lot, but because we're going to be covering mostly other things. Um, <clears throat> I said there are different classes of antibodies. You may have heard of them, IgG, IgE, IgD, M, and A. And as you look at it, these are all basically just different configurations of your classic antibody Y um, configuration. And all of them are set so you, so you can get um, the external part of the molecule uh, where the antigen receptor site is at the outside. This area in these, uh, in these chains is, this, is the attachment site for um, the immunoglobulin in, on the, uh, the cell wall for the B cell. And these are the 
functioning ones that have been made by plasma uh, cells that go out and attack the, uh, so there's maximum attack for the antigens there. As I mentioned, these are the uh, light chain components here. And again, when you get these clones, sometimes you get a cancerous clone that makes nothing but the light chain. Uh, usually two types, kappa and lamma. Lam lamna. Lambda. I'm having some pronunciation problems today. Just as a reminder, in the other uh, video, I talked about the basics of multiple myeloma. Uh, what happens when you get these uh, uncontrolled, you, you lose control of the, uh, the clone cell line for the plasma cell or the B cell. You get these erosions in the bone marrow itself. And it classically will show up in a 75, 80 year old that looks like there, there's an appearance similar to getting shot in the head with a shotgun because you've got all of these pellet size uh, holes or lacunae, or little lakes, where you've got that erosion uh, in the bone marrow by that, uh, that cell line. This is a picture, of, obviously a photomicrograph, of uh, plasma cells or B cells in a, uh, in a multiple myeloma site. This is a little bit more clarity around the cell lines themselves. And again, I'm, I'm blitzing through these because I covered those in the other video in this series. These are the B cells that are uh, mature. And as I mentioned, you've got the uh, immunoglobulin, the antibody attached here to the cell. And then on the outside, you've got the receptors for the antigen. And again, the receptors are made up by the a portion of the long chain and that distal portion of the beta or lambda um, light chain. <clears throat> now, so how does uh, how does kidney light chain uh, how do light chains impact uh, the kidneys? Well, these light chains again the the uh, kappa and lambda light chains. There's just way too much of it being made by these, um, these cell lines, and you've got way too much of this protein in your bloodstream. What do the kidneys do? Again, they filter protein out of the bloodstream. So you're going to get a buildup and a filter block, just clog up the filter. But it's more than just clogging up the filter. You see these blue cells there. Well, that's what happens. Sometimes these uh, beta or these uh, light chains often stimulate neutrophils, uh, some of the immune cells. And as you can see here, um, stimulate inter interleukins. In other words, inflammation. You get not only clogging of the, um, the uh, kidney filter, but you get inflammation. And I'm that's just, it's an immunofluorescence. You've got antibodies that are looking for these in, inflamed areas, and the antibodies have a fluorescent um, component on, on it to make it show up. This is also a little bit geeky for the lab geeks out there. This is looking at uh, light chain multiple uh, myelomas. This is a concentration of lambda light chain, it's increasing this way. This is con uh, increasing concentration of kappa free light chains going this way. So in somebody that's got a kappa light chain, you're going to see huge increases here. If they've got a lambda, lambda light chain, you're going to see increases here. Now, right up through here where you don't have too much of either one of these, you have a normal kidney function. As you start getting increase of, of all uh, kidney uh, proteins, you get stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, uh, chronic kidney disease. Again, where you're getting a lot of, a lot more protein, but it's not headed in either of these directions in terms of light chains. So that was for the lab geeks. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who say, wait a minute, Brewer, you've been talking mostly about uh, cardiology. You started talking about cardiovascular inflammation. The vast majority of this channel has been about cardiovascular inflammation. And guess what? Amyloid is a, is a big issue within uh, cardiology as well, because not only can amyloid um, in these proteins 
clog up uh, the kidneys that can also damage the heart. So <clears throat> Jack, we've quoted uh, many articles out of Jack, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Uh, this one's on uh, amyloid. Uh, the impact of uh, chemotherapy, efficacy of chemotherapy. And here's the uh, uh, maybe the stinger at the end, the uh, the emotional component. This is a Kaplan Meyer life table out of that um, uh, Jack article, and it's basically showing the impact. So every time you get a drop, you get a. This is a represents a death in the population. This drop right here. This is associated with not getting any treatment for amyloidosis. These areas. These are for populations that have had chemotherapy. So just think about it. Chemotherapy is ugly, but the alternative's far uglier. Um, and you've got you've got other very ugly components of the treatment for amyloidosis. Uh, you get um, bone marrow transplant, and um, that's just beyond the scope of this uh, of this video. Thank you again for your attention.